Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody. Here we are on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. We have come down to Orange County. Technically, we're in the city of Irvine. City of Irvine. That's Kurt, correct. introduce yourself to everybody. Well, I'm Kurt Nearing. I'm with the Orange County Model Sailing Club. And uh, what we're doing is we're hosting the uh, Schooner Argosy. Uh, it's kind of our midwinter Argosy, and Argosy is where uh, a fleet of boats get together and they well, now sail. Now here's an idea right here. Take a look at this. This just kind of gives you an yeah. idea of where we are. They're twin-masted uh, schooners. Now the basic rule on this is they're schooners that really did exist prior uh, to 1940. Some of them are actually still sailing. And, Some of uh, the actual schooners themselves, right. not just the model. That's correct. A lot of these guys have actually sailed on the real schooners. Boy, you really kind of jumped right into it. I was going to kind of build the suspense a little okay. bit more we because we got this beautiful park here. But look what we got over here. And Kurt, the name of this club is? Well, ours is the Orange County Model Sailing Club. However, this uh, we're hosting uh, uh, an event for the Southern California Schooner Fleet. The and we do Schooner this, Fleet? We do it twice a year. This is really fascinating stuff. Whose is this over here? That belongs to me. This is yours. Yeah, Could you tell us me. a little bit about this? This yeah. is absolutely beautiful. The designer is uh, John Allen, upstate New England on the East Coast. It's a Wenderman, it's built in 1912. And the real Wenderman is still in Maine, Portland. Portland, Maine. The real one, the real is, one. is in Portland, Maine. Yes. and. Uh, I emailed and sent pictures to the captain, Neil Parker, and he was so excited about it, he sent me a handwritten invitation. I would be his guest if I ever come up to Portland, Maine. So you actually went to Portland, Maine? No, no I just got it out of the book from John Allen, who is a designer. Okay, but have you ever been on board the no, actual? No, but I've planned to. But you're going to. to. this year. <laughs> Look at this. This yeah. is beautiful. Now, it, how hard is it for you to build something like this? Oh, it took around uh, five weeks, eight hours a day. Wow. You know, that you can do it when you're retired. This That's, that boat is built, scratch built, mahogany, Handuo mahogany, Wow. And uh, the deck is, uh, the inside is a white oak and the deck is a basswood. Boy, I bet the real thing is a oh. beaut too. Yeah, the real thing is around the deck, its area is 67 feet overall, 93 feet. And it's a charter boat. It never was a fisher boat. Now, are these you know. all built on the same scale? Yeah. All yes. of these yes. boats are we're built. What's to, the scale? We are trying to keep the scale between around a scale 1 to 17 and 1 to 20. That means one inch to twenty yeah, feet. Yeah, some like that. And what happened? They're all most most of them are all uh, fifty inches on deck. So, uh, so that's part of the regulation. They can correct. only be a certain fifty inches. Wow. Let's take a look at some of these others. Whose is this right here? That one's mine. Oh, this is yours. Tell us about this one. This is a beauty. Yeah, it's a Malabar 8. Uh, it was designed in 1927 by John Alden uh, to race the Newport to Bermuda race. And it won the race the year that it raced, and then it was sold. Um, I built this on Super Bowl Sunday. Built the whole hull. Uh, in fact, here's one right here. Just what I did. Oh, look at this. What is this made of? Uh, this is balsa wood, and it's glued together and it's fiberglassed on the outside and then painted. Wow. And this is the process. This is the exact same boat as this one here. So you built this whole thing on Super Bowl Sunday? Well, not the whole boat, just this hull. Yeah. Yeah, I built this whole hull like this. Put glued all these little strips in. It's on oak frames. So well, this is very labor intensive. He's a lot faster well, yeah. than normal. What? <laughs> He's a lot faster than normal. <laughs> How long does it take you to build one of these things? About a year. Ask him. About I... a year? Yeah. Have you got one over here? Yeah, right here. Oh, this is yours. Well, tell well, us about it. Oh, well, this is yours. Tell took, us a little bit about it. Well, I'm the newcomer in the group here. It took me nine months to build this one. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of these guys are very helpful. They give you plans. They give you pictures. They show you what to do because some of them are really old-time sailors. They sold sailing schooners. How do yeah, people course. get into this club? How do you know, who? I, I happen to be at a picnic for my little nephew, 
and I saw all these boats coming across the water. I thought, what the heck? I went over and talked to them and found out they were radio controlled, and next day I started building one. You got hooked. <laughs> I got hooked. Let's walk out and see this guy out here, because you've already got yours in the water. Yep. You jumped the gun. Yep. Now tell us a little bit about yours and show us how it works. This is the Serena. It's built in 1912 and 83 foot long. And it works like this. So now he's got See? the controls right here and there it goes. See, bring the sails in and it goes. And that's the rudder. Oh, Can you bring it back around to us? Boy, sure. look at this thing. I try. It's probably, is it a good thing to have this much wind today? It's a little bit too much. Yeah. Of course, in the real days, they would have loved this kind yep. of wind. But this is a little too. And he does it all with the, right here with your hand. See? You can make it do anything. How right. fast can this thing go? Not very fast. <laughs> Not very fast, but it goes, it goes pretty good. This is very interesting. Yeah, it really is an interesting hobby. Uh, it, it's a bit of a lost art. Uh, it involves an awful lot of time and a lot of patience. And unfortunately, nowadays, uh, trying to get the kids interested in it is a little difficult. Because, Why? Well, you know, it's that need for speed. They want things that go a little faster, the radio control cars and the fast electric boats and, uh, and, you know, the video games. But really, to be honest with you, because of the radio control, the kids adapt to it very easily. Yeah. The sticks, the gimbals. Yeah. Yeah, they're actually very good at it. Now here's a guy looking at his over here. Come over here and tell us about your, your boat. This is a beauty oh, right, right here. Right. Who's the pencil? <laughs> Howdy, I'm Joel House. Bob DeBoe from San Diego. Tell us a little bit about this thing. Well, this is something that uh, my wife decided I should build about probably 10, 12 years ago. What do you mean your wife decided you My fearless leader, finance officer, all of those other kind of things. Well, it was this in, uh, instead of getting a, a boat a full-size boat? No, we had been that road, and <laughs> she felt as a skipper, and her, she is a crew. Yeah, you know, much that, easier to do it this absolutely. way. Absolutely. Plus, the haul-out fee is so much cheaper. <laughs> you know? And look at this work here. This is so beautiful. Well, what we saw is uh, we saw an advertisement, or not an advertisement, but a um, uh, an article in our local newspaper about the Santana and and Humphrey Bogart and all that kind of thing. And she said, gee, why don't you build this? Well, okay. You know, she who must be obeyed says, why don't you build it? You go ahead and you just What do you mean it. Humphrey Bogart? This was his boat. Oh, this is a replica of Humphrey Bogart's Santana, boat. yes, yes. And a whole bunch of other folks, movie stars that used to, uh, used to own it. Wow. This is the boat that used to uh, anchor off uh, San Pedro with the parties and a lot of the singing and then go on over to um, the big Catalina. island. Cat, thank you. The Catalina and have their parties over there. Now, is this boat still it's uh, st still somewhere? It's still, I believe, up in San Francisco Bay Area, yes. Now, what? explain to me the pecking order here. You got a lot of guys who put in a lot of time. Oh, yes. And there's got to be a real sense of, of sort of pride and comparing somebody's work to another person's work? Not so much comparing as helping other people. That's what we do both. Of course, like something like this, if somebody says, gee, that's beautiful. Oh, God, yes. You know, how much do you owe you? We do that kind of thing. But uh, no, we help each other. And there is no such thing as a bad model as far as we're concerned. They're all just great and they all fall over something similar to that. Yeah, look at this. Now see, look, boy, that's Boy, the wind really gets to these things, doesn't it? Is this yours? Yeah. <clears throat> now, was that that wasn't good for it to blow over like that? Well, it didn't hurt mine, and I don't think it hurt his, so we're okay. How fragile are <laughs> these things? Uh, well, not that fragile. They're they're uh, pretty rugged. Yeah. So I mean, what's yeah. the life expectancy of something like this? Well, this boat's ten years old, and um, I would expect it, with some maintenance, to last longer than I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hugh, this is uh, this is my boat. As a matter of fact, we just pretty much finished it last night about five or six so o'clock. This is a brand new. This is its christening this today. Is its it's christening. going out on the water for the first time. Yeah, it, it sure is, and uh, hopefully uh, it will operate the way it's supposed to now. 
the little extra things on it we haven't gotten around to putting there. They call that gingerbread. It's all the little barrels and all those kind of things that you would see on a, on a real schooner, the anchor. Do you know this thing is going to float and no, going to operate? I, I would say. Well, I'll tell you something about this. Swede Johnson, who I, you might have talked to earlier, uh, he actually designed the model. So we know that it's, it's water worthy and it will, it will operate. Whether the sails need to be adjusted, we're not sure yet. You won't know that till it gets we out there. We put it in the water. And Pete Cruz, who you talked to earlier, had that beautiful Windeman. Uh -huh. He built it. Wow, so people really do help each other. Oh a yeah, it's, a, it's, it's really a now, nice little community. wait a minute, community. here's one without the sails. Is this yours? Yeah, this is mine. What's the deal here? Well, I'm still building on it. Ah, it's, it's a work in progress. Very much in progress. So now when you bring something out like this, do you get a lot of suggestions? Do you get a lot of ideas? Do you get a lot of uh, kind of uh, encouragement? What do people tell you when they... Uh, when mostly they... they want to know how I did what I'm doing. Uh -huh. uh, this is a kind of a different boat. It's called a centerboard schooner. Uh, the underneath part lower raises and lowers instead of being fixed like most of these other boats and so people wonder how does that work you really have to kind of know your nautical history too don't you oh you read books and and find out different things in, in the books and uh, i like the old working boats rather than the yacht type boats so this is a, a chesapeake bay oyster dredge what is this south seas you got a hula dancer on yeah, here yeah it's a wiki pretty a wiki pretty. Yeah, they they wear those little grass skirts. They're pretty. They're pretty wiki, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal on the history of this one? This is a, an 1875 pinky schooner. Now, why did you decide on this one? Because I guess when you get ready to build these things, right. you've got a choice of literally of hundreds boats. of, of right. boats that you could choose okay, from. Okay, no kidding. The reason I built this boat because it had a toilet right here. What? That's the toilet. This is the uh, poop deck back here. And um, there's a toilet on the pinky schooners here, so I built um, a toilet boat. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm serious. That just attracted me. It was a fast, it was a fast schooner, and um, I liked the, uh, the style of it. It looked like it would have been a real challenge to do. And that toilet just caught me. I couldn't, I couldn't not build it. <laughs> do you have many people like this in your club? Oh, they're all like this. Wow, this is kind of, I can't tell whether you're kidding me. No, or I'm whether... serious. I'm serious. And then like this one, this is an Edson Shock 1937 boat. Oh, this is yours too. Yeah, actually we, we raced this for about 15 years and then um, we decided to go up to a little bit more high-tech boat and we went to this boat right here. Ah, so you know what, the same thing happens with people in their models as yep. happened to people with their real boat. That's right, it's the quest for speed under sail. That's it right there. What's the deal here? We got the three of you lined up here together. Come on over here, Cameron, and take want, a look at this. If you want to go right, you push it that way. If you want to go left, you push it that way. If you want to let the sails out, you push them out. If you want them to come in, you pull them in. And that's it. That's, that's it. it. That's all. Wow. See it out there? The sails are going out. Well, there's no wind. But see, I'll turn it right. So it's just as simple as moving your thumb. Yeah. And it's proportional like a tiller. If you just move it a little bit, it only moves the rudder a little bit. Now he's putting his in. How does this work? What's how do how, you just you put it in the water? Put it in the water. Make sure your radios are turned on so that um, you have control of it once you release it. Uh huh. Now you just check. Make sure you got rudder and sail. And Push it out. And then you're good to go. Like that. Oh. And wow, it's up to speed right away. Yeah. Now, who's got the right of way in this situation out here? Uh, it's pretty much just like regular sailing rules. Starboard, you have a rights. Leeward, you have rights. Um, yeah, Harry, you so, tell who's got you right know, away. Just, it's yeah. just like regular, uh, regular <laughs> racing. <laughs> What, somebody keeps... No, Harry just hit me with his boat. Oh. And, it, <laughs> and I had inside mark on him, so oh. he, he was... Well, let's to... get a look here. Now, which one is yours? You, so... Mine's the black one up. So <laughs> we've got... Here comes another one in. 23's out of control. Okay. 23's out of control? Yeah, something's come loose. See it out there? It's just going around in circles. Boy, this is... There's a lot of activity going on around here. The mainsail's come loose. So how are you going to get that one back in? I'm going to just sit here and play with it and hope it <laughs> the wind brings it in eventually. <laughs> you on? That's Thank his. You. It's out of control out there in the middle. And it's just kind of... 
It's just kind of there. Yeah. This is great. Look at this. Boy, this is beautiful. Oh, this is this is the only type of sailing. Well, not unless you get a big boat skipper, but a uh, model boat, these are the best. See, now this is, this really begins to get you excited about just looking out there at all these yeah, things. It is, it really is. Do you need a body of water this big to make it really work? Well, you see that we're not, we're only using a, probably a third of this lake. Mm -hmm. But if we were to have a big racing regatta, we would probably use probably half of the lake because of for the um, bounded distance involved. Uh -huh. uh, we're fooling around here now, just going around in circles. What we usually do in cases like this, all we do is try to kiss a guy in front of us. <laughs> Out at this lake, you'll, uh, on the first and uh, third Sundays of every month, we sail these, and, and along with uh, smaller boats called the V-32s. And on the second and fourth Sundays, we sail the Marbleheads, which you saw a little bit earlier. There are more racing boats. So you're out here every week. Yeah, <laughs> you can ask my wife, I am. So this kind of is one of these things that my kind wife, of... My wife understands that Sunday's my day, <laughs> that I come out here, I come sailing every Sunday, plus every Wednesday. <laughs> okay, we're getting ready for a race right now. What's happening? They're lining up and they're gonna have a... Two, one. There they go. Now what's How happening? That? Well, they go, they're going to go up to that orange round ball up there and then leave it to port. That means on the left side. And then go down to the second white mark down there and then to that far yellow ball down there and then back through the line. This and, whole uh, thing takes about a minute, a minute and not, a half. Not very long, but then yeah. we have another start and they do it all over again. Now how fierce does this Look over here, it, it, suddenly things have gotten very serious over here. What'd you say? I said they go for blood. Do they really? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see if they're going for blood. Are you going for blood? You bet. Which one or where are you? Are I'm you? last, but I'm still going for blood. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in first place. I hope to be in your place. No, yes. What's for these Never guys mind. that do this bit, you know, trying to steer it with the radio here. Look, probably we're in the Navy. I was in the Marine Corps. That's where I'm ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Now you get a real idea of the competition out there. This is this is serious. Yeah. It's really more fun than serious, but it is a lot of fun. What we do now is just try to get in a position where you're in a favorable position, usually on the, what we call the windward pin here, which is this red mark right uh -huh. here. So you're going to bring them all around and they're going to start right here. All right. 35. And it's all a timing situation now. We're at 35 now. I'll come back out like this. And probably 25, I'll be come back this way, I hope. Which one are you? I'm the X9, just coming right toward us. Oh, right, right here. Right here, yeah. But you're on the wrong side of the starting line. That's for the moment, yes. 11, 10, 9, 8. Oh, you now get it right just... to the last minute. No room, no room. Oh, look. 3, 2, 1. There they go. Oh, uh, that's what we call a timing start. You just try to get hit the pin on the on the mark, and then uh, good start, Bob. Pray from there on. And like any competition, uh, when you get into a competition like this, you start to shake. Like right now, I'm just shaking like a leaf. <laughs> why? Well, I'm not sure why. You know, but uh, that's what competition does for you. That's part of the fun, really. I guess. It looks so gentle and smooth oh, yes. out there. Yeah, it is. And yet but the competition. But from here, you're, 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 you're doing this. Yeah. And is California kind of known for its models? For oh, its... yeah, yeah. Wow, because of the weather that uh, is kind of conducive to. Really, really. As a matter of fact, uh... Just, yeah, I'm just noticing. Just, I'm talking to you while you're doing this. I really shouldn't no, be distracting you. That's no problem. I, uh, I'm watching and talking at the same time. 
Look at his hands down here, Cameron. Watch the master at work. I don't think I can break out of that one. Now, are you a member of the club? No, we just came out today and happened to show up and there's a lot more boats here than usual. <laughs> So you're out here every week just on your own. <laughs> Not every single week, but we come out fairly often. Why don't often. you join the club? It's a different type of boat. These are schooners and then mine's a sloop. Uh -huh. So it's a slightly different type of boat. How do people get in? How did you get interested into this? In this? I've been sailing my entire life. Just real boats and racing and sailing and racing and sailing. And now it's just, this is a much cheaper form of sailing than, uh, <laughs> than actually having a boat. <laughs> These two boats are identical. They're, they're, custom, they're uh, kit boats that you can buy and they're about 300 bucks. It takes about 10, 12 hours to put them together. And then, um, but they're exactly identical. So this is kind of the simple way of Very simple doing it here. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty simple. 300 bucks. Yeah, $300. And then I had the remote already. I use this for my helicopter as well. Uh-huh, for and your, you have a model helicopter. Yeah, and it's got a module on the back that you can change. So you can change from 72 to 75, depending if you're flying air or in the ground. So are model boat guys also model Car guys, model oh, yeah. uh, I, airplane oh, guys. Yeah. I, we, Bob works on cars for a living, high performance stuff, so do I. I'm into model cars, model airplanes, model boats, anything electronic, anything mechanical, you know. So is this the first day it's been in the water? Yeah, this will be the first day. Well, <laughs> let's is, put it in, let's see what made, happens. That's why I figured I'd watch him for a while and learn from his mistakes and, you know. So here it goes. Boy, this is a... Yeah, Bring on, Jeff. We got one coming out and one going in. First time. Wow. So we'll see. There he goes. Yep. Oh, Doesn't take long to start having fun with these things. Do well, it? I hope not. I hope not. Well, we'll see what we can do with it. Are these model boat people pretty good people? They don't cause any problems out here at Mason Park, do they? None of any problems at all. They're wonderful people. They're nice to come out and, and talk to. Uh, they're usually out here every Saturday and Sunday for the, for the public to come out and enjoy, uh, see their, the craftsmanship of the, the ships that they've built. And uh, they got a great little club. And uh, really, it's a nice added feature to the park for the people to enjoy. The, well, yeah, they're putting the on a show here. for people oh, who wonderful. come to the park. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, we're, we're happy to see them. And, and they are a nice addition to the park. Now, now this is just the tip of the iceberg as far as the activities that model boat people have just right here in Southern California. Yeah, this is of course mainly a sail event, but there are submarine events, there are... Wait a minute, they're model submarines. Oh yes. They actually submerge? And fire torpedoes. Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, but they're not much fun to see because they disappear. <laughs> So, <clears throat> what else you got? In Riverside, we have a, a tugboat pushing contest where we have a barge that weighs 400 pounds and then a tugboat, depending on the size, 26 to 36 inches, will push that around through a course, wow. <clears throat> turn it around, and try not to bump the buoys. Is there nothing <clears throat> you model ship people don't think of? Well, we've been working at it a long time. We think of a lot of things. Well, this has been a very exciting day. We're ending with a bang here, here at Mason Park in Irvine. Thank you all very much for inviting us to come out and spend the afternoon with you. The Orange County Model Sailing. Sailing Club. We've had an absolutely wonderful day. And of course, this is available for everyone to come out and enjoy on a weekly basis. You guys are always out here, aren't you? Every Saturday and Sunday. Just ask their wives, they'll tell you. <laughs> and now we're ending up. Uh, Kurt, what is it you wanted us to do here? I want you to christen this boat the Kokomo. This is your new boat, this is and it. this is the first time it's been out in the water. This is it. This is uh, the christening, yes, that's correct. <laughs> and we're on a budget, and we're in a park, so we don't have real champagne. We've sparkling got sparkling, uh, sparkling cider. Don't get drunk. <laughs> and so here we go. I christen thee the Kokomo. Too much? Yeah. There it goes. All right, here we go. Send that baby.
<laughs> wow. We have had an absolutely wonderful day down here at Mason Park. Good show. Yeah, look at it. It's looking good. It's a winner. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Here comes the guns. Well, Hill, we appreciate you coming out to see this uh, this end of the hobby. Uh, yeah. Radio controlled model sailing is uh, is really enjoyable, and we'd like to uh, invite anybody that wants to come out and sail with us to feel free, and we'll put the radio in their hand and and uh, let them take the boat around the the mark. Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.